Hey, it's Chris. So, a little bit of rant, ramble, and unboxing of new stuff. What do we got here this week? What do we got going on? What's going to be talked about upcoming on the channel? So, two of them are sitting right in front of me if I don't knock them over. A little bit of stuff you've maybe going to recognize. A little bit of something new. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, let's let's go with the bigger one first here. Right? That's the more intriguing one. You probably know of this one, but we'll talk about this in a second. This is Mindbug, the latest expansion. But what we have here in front of us, actually, if I move all the Mindbug stuff out of the way, is one that I sort of have to do a little bit of mea culpa on. And what you see here in front of you is Tales uh, from the Red Dragon Inn, from Slugfest Games in combination with Flat Out being the distributor, I believe. And I remember when this one came on crowdfunding, right? And I thought it was very similar to the other, you know, Red Dragon Inn games. The pseudo fake drinking, bidding, knock out your opponent sort of game. This is like a cooperative spin on it. Like a lighter dungeon crawl style of things. And I was kind of like, meh. And then a few people actually had it as one of their best games of 2023. And I said, cooperative? Fantasy-esque? League of Games? And that sort of leads me into the side ramble of this one as a whole, right? Because the interesting thing on this, and how I think I ended up with this, is flat out, the distribution side of things, sent out this big email to content creators. Or sort of big email. I don't know if it was a big email or not, but it was one of those where they said, uh, you know what? Here are all of our games, right? I mean, there were probably, I want to say upwards of 100 games on this email and 100 games that they said, are you interested in this one? Yes or no, essentially. And this was one of the ones I clicked yes on. And so randomly, this just showed up the other week. So walk through, playing through scenarios. Okay, it's scenario driven, interesting. This seems to be very straightforward, running you through exactly what you're gonna be seeing on the scenario, uh, kind of just giving you step by step. It seems relatively straightforward as a whole. And I believe, is this one just token based or is it also standee based? I'm sure we'll get there. But depending on what you do, here's some stop conditions. You shouldn't be reading those or looking those. Scenario two, okay. Playing scenario three. Okay, so three scenarios there. Finishing chapter one. Okay, so let's see. Is there anything more there? Hidden surprises throughout the campaign. Okay, open this first. So I'm probably not supposed to open a bunch of this stuff. Uh, this is just filler. Okay, filler, okay. No cardboard was hurt in the making of this video. Too much? Okay, good thing I got a knife here because these are all wrapped up. The vault cards, uh, open this first. Again, are these, I was, I didn't think this was miniature based, but is this, oh my gosh, I hate these. I hate these things. I can't do these ones. No! These are like my arch nemesis. It's the ones that open weird on the side. Like I ripped these almost every single freaking time. Right there, just ripped it. Uh, but it's just like, how do you open these things without like just destroying them sometimes right there? See, I got it, but I ripped it. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, minor things, minor things. But like, why do you make it like that? If it's so easy to rip and so hard for me to get out. Oh yeah, it is little miniatures. Oh, okay. Little miniatures. Uh, okay. I mean, I would have in standees. Ooh, these are actually, these are actually relatively detailed. This big guy is actually relatively impressive. Actually, if we take him out, if I stop saying the word actually, actually, actually. So you can see, he's kind of cool. He's kind of cool, not too bad. And the other ones there, you know, again, just kind of there. So I wasn't expecting it to be fully miniature based. Then you know what, we've got your enemy cards and it looks like we've got your hero cards. Again, the aesthetic isn't the most appealing. And I think, again, that was why I initially judged it by its cover, if you will. Toss that away. What else we got in here? Again, this isn't going to be, this is going to be kind of a loose bag and a loose box if this is, whoa, holy smokes. Look at these baggies. Look at that. That's thick. Look at, here's the thick deck cards. Here's the baggies. Whoa, that's a lot of baggies. Okay, that scares me actually. Because if you're giving me that many baggies, like how many other things am I going to have? Ooh, do I have standees too? Ooh, okay. Well, you know what team I am, so... Uh, there are your colored dice. I mean, the, the big question, and the thing I didn't see answered on some of the comments about this being one of the better games of, you know, the cooperative sense or better games overall of 2023 was, why? Why? Okay, there's nothing else in there. I got a little baggie to go with it, and that's kind of, and I'm, maybe these are like little promos or little, these are little helper dudes, like these guys over here. It's like, they match up. Recovery mode. And then Pookie. Pookie. Is Pookie there? Yeah, is Pookie... 
Pookie's on that end. Pookie! Pookie, a little bunny. Anyway, so, wow, that's okay. Like, that's fine, but like, this isn't necessary. Now I've got this huge layer of box here. You can kind of see that it's only half full. And this is maps. If I can pull this out. Whoa, okay, so these are, these are flexible maps. Okay. Okay, I don't mind this whatsoever, actually, because, you know, if you watch some of my other video content, I kind of commented, even on the Mythic Battles Ragnarok one, that I said, you know what? You know what's not? Oh, my good gracious, golly, great googly moogly, to steal a quote from my uh, kid's book recently. Um, this is a lot of tokens. That's why you're getting those bags. So that's chapter one. Holy cow. You are not going to see me punch all of this stuff. I will not waste your time. This video will not be that long. But chapter one scenario book. Um, wow. Okay. All right. I mean, I you know me. I said I'm team standee, but holy tokens, Batman. And I've commented and criticized that lately with some of the other big crowdfunding projects. Um, chapter two. So we saw that scenarios one, two, and three were all in chapter one. So again, the question is how many of these are going to be there? Holy, this is just for chapter two. So like you're not even gonna have some of these tokens and some of these abilities or whatever they may be, right? Just even in that first chapter. Holy cow. Okay, so this is just gonna be a box full of baggies later on. Which, you know what? There's no insert, right? You, you see that? There's no insert and I'm okay with that because when you zoom out here, you can see that, I mean, again, like this is mostly empty now. This is, you know, chapter four and chapter five, which has a new, I don't know, is that a bad guy, a good guy? A cult assassin? Big bad. Oh, big bad. Probably shouldn't be like showing you that, but you can't you can't read that and you're not gonna remember that, you know, a week from now. So holy craps, Batman. And if each of these Whoa, I didn't even read this. Okay. So the other thing I just saw here at the top of the other chapter. Chapter five, scenarios twenty-two through twenty-five. So that means I have twenty-five freaking different scenarios here to go through. And look at the bad guy. Big bad's doing something crazy with these tokens, right? Like that is clearly covering some stuff up. We got some like leech mages going on there, some spell circles of crazy kinds. Um, okay, this one's the thinnest one. This is just the one border, but all I mean, all the rest of these are you know multiple boards potentially. Actually, no, one or two, one or two. But I mean, even there, right? You've got some of the bad guys, some of the good guys. This is a thin board one. Some guys up there. Again, chapter four, seventeen through twenty-one, right there. Prologue. So. As long as they're not too much narrative, like, you know what? Because you don't you don't buy this game for the narrative, right? You buy this game for the combat system. It gives me sort of adventure tactics vibes in a different way, if you will. Like, if this is the next step up from adventure tactics, not in a sort of purely Final Fantasy tactics aspect, but in a, you know, general crawl side of things, I'm relatively pleased by this. And also trepidatious, because... 25 scenarios well i guess i know what i'm doing over this weekend just kidding you can't play 25 scenarios in one weekend you can probably play like five or six though in a weekend pretty easily let's let's just open this up though just for curiosity's sake so i can see what the maps look like as a whole so you can get a better sense of what this is doing so okay ooh, these are thin Ooh, ooh. never mind i'm not sure how i feel about these now so it's basically just paper okay well i mean cost affordability i'll give them that and if your scenarios are self-contained like this, and you've got some guys along the side over here, you've got just the playing the round phase down here at the bottom that gives you a quick summary of readying combat and objectives. You know what? This could be just a very short dr driven scenario game. It gives me very much better vibes of the one that more recently launched that I was highly critical of, Dead Keep, right? Again, why would you buy something that's necessarily an unknown quantity when you can do this? Right? Are you that enamored with the zombie side incorporation? Are you that enamored with the extra extra miniatures? Because this one has a couple miniatures, right? And this one has plenty of tokens to make up for it. So let's see. Are these are these enough maps? Like are all of these scenarios different maps? You can scroll down here through flip through the bottom here. So yeah, pretty much you have all of this. Searching for the door. 25. Yeah, so. 25, is this double-sided too? Let's check. Yep, double-sided. So, uh, yep, you have all 25 scenarios having all different unique maps. And you know what? This is not at all what I was expecting. 
This is actually rather clever. I won't say that I'm like super in love with it, but from a usability factor, this is probably behind like the spiral bound books of like Jaws of the Lion and the upcoming title blades, right? In terms of just, okay, I can make this work. This is gonna be easier set up, tear down, using in the first place. And if there's anything on this channel that I emphasize, it's usability. So we just throw that all back in. And this is the card. I could open these cards here if you want. You know what, you, you wanna hear, you wanna see these cards? Okay, we'll do the cards really quickly. I still have the knife here that I used to open the box prior. Actually, it says, do not look in the cards in the vault until instructed to do so. So I probably shouldn't yet do that. Okay, we'll hold off. Don't need the knife. But I actually had to use the knife to open up mine bug here. Spoilers on that side of things. So we'll throw these minis, uh, you know, we'll get the cover back on them so they don't go flying all over the place. But um, I mean, there you go, right? Right? No, no insert, just gonna shake that around and kind of go all over the place. So as long as that rules isn't a too big of a slog, I think, okay. A little bit more anticipatory excited than I was thinking, actually. There you go. That's what happens when you open a box and find out and surprise. So now, now we have Mindbug Battlefruit Kingdom! And you may be wondering, like, why is he holding a piece of paper? Well, this is the piece of paper that they sent me with it, right? And it's the new GameFound campaign. They actually sent this to me before the GameFound Feast announcement, so I actually knew that this one was coming up, right? Two standalone sets, right? I don't even have to put a graphic in here. You can just deal with the paper copy of this. Uh, one new add-on pack for a four-player mode, and I got a sneak peek with three extra cards. Okay, so that's all that's on the piece of paper, though. And there's not really any spoilers, so it's not really a big deal. I think I showed you that. And so I have two copies of it right here. One is still in shrink. One... I already took the, the packaging, the you know, plastic off because I actually had to use the knife. Like there was no little tear tab and even the knife had trouble. I was like, are you kidding me? And again, like, I think I'm just an idiot when it comes to this stuff. And so the interesting thing is that these little tokens, harvest tokens is what they're called. And it appears you're just gonna have cards that have countdowns. So are you familiar with that? I mean, that's basically what you've got going on. And if you're not familiar with Mindbug, right? The whole premise of Mindbug is relatively simple and straightforward. You've got your keywords here that you're gonna to have to remember. You've got your triggers and abilities depending on when they're you know, going to activate. When you play the card, when you use the attack, when you defeat the card as well. And then it has the new one here on the back that has the action of harvesting. So when it's in play, you take its action effect instead of attacking or playing this turn, and you just take one of these tokens off and when all the tokens are off, well, you're done. Okay, you know, but the concept of mind bug is that you have these two little mind bugs sitting out in front of you and you just have them sitting there and at any point you can use them and flip them over as a one-time use during the game to steal somebody else's creature. Otherwise you have one action to turn essentially in terms of, you know, playing cards and attacking. And it's just first one to knock out the other person's life points. And this is just, you know, remember Epic the card game or sort of, magic the gathering style vibe this is just play and kill and it's just all overpowered it's all insane you only take a portion of the cards of this huge deck in the first place which again say what you want about the aesthetic and there's a little bit of duplicate here and you just shuffle up a certain number of these cards and then you take of those cards you divide them equally majority of them between you and your opponent. So I don't remember what it is off the top of my head because I didn't actually prep that part of the video, right? That would have been too smart for me, right? Legion Games. And so like, I mean, let's say there's 50 cards in this deck, right? You take 30 of them, shuffle up 30 of the 50, and then you each get 12 of those 30, something along those lines. And again, don't quote me on the numbers. I know the numbers are wrong. I'm purely shooting from the hip right now um, because of that. And so then you each get like those 12 cards and you have to utilize those. And if you run out, you lose. If you can't knock the other person out first, you lose. And you just go and you create these weird combos because everything has, you know, poison and you know, frenzy and tough and hunter. And so all of these, you know, keywords will interact with each other and create just, just a different dynamic. And so the question is with this copy, is it going to be of your liking? Are you going to like it as much as you did the previous one? And if you didn't like it previously, you know, is this gonna change your mind? And the answer is probably not, but that's okay. And so I'm interested to see what they've got going on with this. How do the dynamics differ? And again, you know, I as far as I know, until proven otherwise, all of these are cross compatible. So if you have one of the two of their editions, it just gives you more of a smattering that you can smash together. So who doesn't like that? If they're all just, you know, meta overpowered, then they're all overpowered and they're all overpowered. So you can't accuse anything along those lines of being out of balance, right? Oh, this game's not balanced. It's not meant to be balanced. Get over it. I will say though, 
uh, when I'm, you know, thumbing through these cards here, this was a game that I wasn't sure how I felt about it the first time. And the more I played it, the more I liked it, which is kind of weird, right? Especially nowadays when you have impressions and impression-based situations that were so uh, judgment, you know, first, second, and if it's not, it's gone, right? Too much of a too much of a good thing. No, I don't know what you're talking about there, Chris, but with this one, that was kind of it, right? You just play it and you play it again and you play it again and you play it again and then it just grows on you. And that was what I wasn't expecting with this one. So when they sent me a email saying, hey, would you like to talk about this one? I said, yeah, sure. Again, I thought I'd highlight it as well if you're interested at all. And we can talk in the comments and you can kind of see uh, what some of the differences are if you're truly, truly interested. So there you go. Cool side note here. I just threw all the tokens in the bottom of this card box and it actually kind of fits. Well, it's pushing out the edges, but it kind of works. What? Convenience. Quality of life. Now, I sit in front of you again with two big boxes here. Both of the worker placement side of things, both crowdfunded, that were sent to me to talk about. And we got two different, completely different thematic incorporations here. One, Utopia. Time traveling, time lord, megalomaniac, getting three butterfly events to win the game. Yeah. And by the way... It's Kind of a really heavy game, actually. And then, Age of Rome! Age of Rome. Nine rounds, four phases each, work replacement. Ancient Rome, right? Let's go. So again, these are a little outside of my usual jurisdiction, right? Worker placement. But you know, the thematic incorporation of a megalomaniac time lord, right? Who doesn't want to be an overpowered Doctor Who? Who doesn't? Who? Who? Sorry, I didn't realize I was actually doing that there. Okay, little insert, little how to actually put it together. Okay, okay, okay. And solo co-op. Oh, co-op? Ah, oh, Tito Home Games. I didn't realize you could play this worker placement as a co-op. Okay, a little bit of round, just basically running you through the rounds of what the rounds actually look like there. So this is less um, how to play it, but literally just how to show you nine rounds of things. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Let's see what else we got here. Rule book, rule book as well there. Okay, not terribly thick, a little bit extensive, not too bad, not too bad there. Okay, we'll go with it. And then what do we got going on here? Your usual monies for all you folks that like those metal coins, right? You can throw these out, but you got some dials and just, ooh, that's actually, no, just kidding. Here we go, the board underneath right away. Uh, and then a punch board under that. So it's kind of split there. And we got the big old board here in the middle. Big old board, like Bob. Okay. No clue what's going on here, folks. None whatsoever. But you're doing through these four phases, and this is a big project. It's an under the radar. Both of these are from crowdfunding. You got the player boards. Now, I think something happened with the player boards because I have a separate pack that I didn't grab for the camera here that has these exact same player boards, I think. So I think there was a change or an errata or something along those lines. But you can also see, maybe you can't actually, that they're inlaid. So you got dual layering there for that. So that's nice. What else we got going on here? Ooh, this is pretty. Uh, wood. Uh, wood tokens. Wood. Wood of some kind. I'm going to be very careful with my phrasing there about wood. But I'm assuming that's a first player marker. Sleeves? Sleeves. Sleeves. I don't expect sleeves in this bag. What is this? That. That, folks. That's your metal coins. Right? Metal coins. Don't need the punch. Can't juggle them all on camera, right? I can't juggle. I'm sorry. My brother-in-law was actually also an undergrad uh, cheerleader. So that was that's always a fun topic of conversation. He's actually really proud of it. I have no qualms against it. My oldest is in gymnastics right now. So these are nice. Okay, production seems rather stellar so far. Although the wooden seems a little bit... Okay, nope. We're getting down to the bottom of the box here if I actually put that in camera shot. If you dig down through the trays here, which again, trays and tops... You can kind of see that they're all, you know, sitting there at the whole uh, storage individual for players. And then we got, I'm assuming, what is this going on here? This is like heavy duty here. So, I don't know. I, you know, again, just like I said earlier, sometimes with these boxes being so tight nowadays, you know, I'm scared of ripping it because you just can't get them open without sometimes. Like, look at this. I can't even, because if I 
press it any further open to get my finger underneath here, I'm going to rip it that way. But if I tear it anymore, oh, I got it. I got it. You go. I got it. What are we, what's actually in this? What is this that's so... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have some acrylic here. I was not expecting... That's why the board is all white. These are just acrylic see-through. You can kind of see that as a whole there. Let me give you something black so you can actually contrast it with the overhead camera here. If I can actually pick this up again. So what you've got going on here is this. And you can see that we've got a little castle and you've got symbols underneath it. I'm assuming depending on rounds or phases, your ones twos and then threes here and so i've got a huge stack of them right here that i'm just going to punch out and be able to utilize so okay okay cassius schemes so this must be more of the solo co-op aspect of things and then we've got a few other things here including your little score pad by the way do you guys use these like i would say 95 percent of the games that i have ever had and played that use scoring pads I don't use them. I don't. I just sit there and do it. I mean, maybe that's because math has always been my strong suit and like, I love mental math. Again, yeah, I'm one of those weirdos, right? If you didn't figure that out already by watching this channel to this point, I'm sorry uh, for spoiling it at this time. So, uh, and then we got a big tray down here with the other pieces to go along with it that I'm assuming you're gonna put over that white portion that we talked about. And then as well, that are gonna fit on top to make those castles even uh, easier to see. So. Let's see what these actually are, because I'm curious now. Whoa, those are colorful. Oh, this is all connected. Okay, so that's going to go around the interesting part of the center there. And that's where you're going to be putting those castles in the first place. So, rotatable, mix and matchable, replayable. How many words in a row can I say that end in able? Um, you ever see that Acquisitions, or listen to the Acquisitions Incorporated? Uh, I think it's Chris Perkins does the GMing for them early on, and then I think it switched. But he created this NPC, uh, this non-playable character that was like a lizard that was helping the Acquisitions Incorporated folks go through the dungeon that they were in. And it was like this little lizard. And he, its quirk was everything, it had a French accent and everything ended with shun. Acquisition? Proposition? And it only would say one word. So everything really ended with that. And it was really actually quite clever and funny. So um, I have a whole bunch of stuff here now. How do I even put this back without, you know, punching it and organizing it? Because again, like I'm always one of those people as well that takes these and doesn't put them all back into the bags, actually utilizes like these or just regular baggies. I want all the yellows together, like not all the shapes together, right? Am I weird for doing that? Or is that what you guys do too? I don't really know. I, I guess that's just always been my thing. I don't like putting all the shapes back together. It makes no sense to me. It comes always with the shapes together, but I feel like some games make it very clear that you're not supposed to put the shapes together afterwards, and some always seem like, well, yeah, you can kind of do that. And which side of that line do you fall on, right? Again, no cardboard was terribly hurt in the making of this video, so I can do that, you know, and not really have any qualms about it. That's an empty cardboard box, folks. Um, so we got Picasso schemes here and the first player marker and more tokens and more squares here. Okay. So we don't need that. That can go in the pocket for trash later and we can punch these out in between so that I don't have the weight and the everything else that goes along with them. So camera magic, that's age of Rome. Interesting, interesting, interesting board dynamic there. Okay. Worker placement. You know, I'd include this part, you know, as part of the video. And I maybe just have it in the outtakes instead. Because, I mean, like, who wants to sit here and watch people punch? It reminded me again of that uh, Star Wars Unlimited video that I talked about in one of my other videos. I went on to this guy's streaming because, you know, like, Star Wars Unlimited, right? It's, it's all the rage right now. The booster packs are being sold for, like, 20% above MSRP until the restock happens. Ooh, that's sharp in case you're, you're not careful when you're punching that out there. And guy is literally doing one card at a time. Streaming to 100 people, it's fine. He had a couple thousand subscribers, he had like two, 3,000 subscribers. Um, gosh, I really wanna get FFG's response to me. What do I have to do? What cartwheels, gymnastics, or anything do I have to do to get FFG to respond to me? So if anyone knows anybody at FFG, that would be super helpful, right? Because I would love to get in on their like content creator side of things for Star Wars Unlimited. Like, not now, right? But like going forward where they've already announced Shadows of the Galaxy and they've already announced the third set, which is coming in November, uh, Twilight of the Republic. 
And the second set's gonna have like Ray and you know all the people from like the second uh, set of movies, third set of movies. Sorry, and second set of movies. Yeah, right. We just don't we just don't count one, two, and three on this channel. Uh, we totally chop them. Right. A new definition of the chop order, if you've never heard of that, where people recommend like what order you should watch the Star Wars uh, trilogies in. So. Uh, you know, if anyone knows anyone at FFG or wants to put me in contact or wants to throw a good word out there or anyone wants to start a viral campaign for me to cover that, because some of these channels are like Star Wars Unlimited dedicated and some of them are just like random TCG channels. And the ones that are just Star Wars Unlimited are much smaller than me. And I feel like I would love to bring more of a presence to it. But then, you know, they're just really selective. Again, it's one of those companies where I have no clue how they choose who they choose, right? So is this just gonna go loose in there? I guess we're just gonna go loosey goosey. I guess we're gonna free ball. Ha! <laughs> Didn't expect to use that word on this channel anytime soon. So yeah, we're just gonna put these in here and we're gonna hope that I don't cut myself either picking them up right now or also uh, getting them out in the future. So I'm intrigued by this one. So Age of Rome, we'll see where it goes and we'll see back and I'll report back to you, you know, maybe later this month-ish or so because I don't know if this video is gonna be airing at the end of March or the beginning of April. So we'll see. Although now I don't know how I'm going to get this back in here. I don't know how this is. How did, how did I screw this up? Because these really need to, oh boy, this is not working out well. I screwed something up here. Oh, gee, this is, this is going to be horrible. Even without all those tokens, like this is clearly sticking well above that. Oof, oof. This is going to require a lot of camera magic as a whole. So, by the way, as I'm uh, taking off the plastic here for Utopia, stuff it in my pocket, and my pocket's, like, overflowing with, like, all the extra plastic and garbage from these unboxings, um, these knives that um, I'm using to, like, open this, these are one of the ones that, like, my wife picked up, and they're the ones that I just don't even feel comfortable with holding half the time because they're knives that are, like, almost too sharp. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you're like, oh, my goodness. Like, if you were to slice yourself with this one... Uh, I had it happen, uh, not not this one, the one that had the band-aid from the couple videos ago, but the one um, that I actually just punctured myself, like, no, sliced myself with, because I was just running my thumb along the side of the cake knife to rub frosting off of there during my kid's birthday from like last month, and it just like sliced my finger open. Thankfully, I did it really slowly and really, really gently, so like I wasn't bleeding. It just cut the skin enough to open it, but not to bleed, but I was like, oh my goodness, right? So anyway, Utopia, right? That's not why you, actually, you know what? That is why you tune into the channel. You don't tune into the channel for some of the game stuff. You tune into the channel for some of this stuff. So help me go viral, um, tweet, at FFG, help me do that. You know what? I'm going to make that the new thing on this channel of helping them, helping me get recognized by FFG. I tried that a few years ago, like a year and a half ago with Simon. I tweeted them like every single day and they finally responded to me and then ignored me for the rest of my life. So um, it was around the time of X-Men United, right before the campaign for X-Men uh, Marvel United. And Jeremy Howard invited me, uh, shout out to you, Jeremy Howard, if you're watching this video, uh, invited me to go play like virtually uh, Star Wars Marvel Unlimited. Star Wars uh, Marvel Unlimited. Wow, holy crap, man. My, my mind is totally there. Uh, he invited me to play Marvel United, the X-Men version with the blue and gold teams, uh, virtually with Simon. But it was like in the middle of the workday, in the middle of a weekday. And I was like, well... I have a full-time job. I cannot take a couple hours at work to, one, leave work, <laughs> right? Because my work now doesn't even allow me to view Board Game Geek. So I can't even necessarily access it to even do something like that, let alone like actually take a couple hours off to go play a virtual video game to get filmed, to get me noticed by, uh, you know, bigger channels and a lot more wider of an audience, right? Like, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. And then I can't do it. It's kind of like my Board Game Co video. If you watch that, ooh, I maybe don't watch that. Um, just embarrassing myself to a wider audience. I don't even know, like, Truth be told, I should be talking about Utopia right now. And again, I really like this aesthetic, but truth be told, when I did that Board Game Go video, um, I haven't even looked at it. Like, I didn't know when it was going live. He never told me, like, when exactly it was going to go live. So all of a sudden, I got, like, a couple messages saying, hey, Chris, you're on Board Game Co's channel today. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> that video. You know, I, I don't even know how it did. 
I don't know how embarrassing I looked after the editing or what sort of a fool I made myself for. So uh, you guys can, again, can tell me in the comment section down below. Did any of you guys watch that one? I should probably reach out to him again. Although maybe he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore because I'm kind of an embarrassment as a whole on the board game hobby sometimes, I feel like. <laughs> uh, so, okay, we have this huge board. Um, okay, ooh, this is interesting. This is interesting. I don't really know what to make of this because you've got all these different eras. You've got this different fold out and you've got different symbols down at this end here. Is it double sided too? It looks like it's double sided and this double sidedness is actually completely different on this side. So I'm wondering what the difference actually is because the decks seem to be divided in the corners A, B, C, D as you can see on that end C and D and this end A and B and then these symbols are in the middle. The decks are here too. So phase one, time travel. Phase two, recover, refresh, and reset. This is a game that conceptually seems really freaking amazing. But this is also a game that I think is high risk, high reward. Because if you can't execute it properly, I could see it failing. And the other thing I have concerns about with both of these are just time, right? You know, you've got, what, like uh, nine rounds of four phases each in Age of Rome. And with this one, again, like there's a lot going on here. This player board you're dealing with five different workers, five different slight asymmetries, I'm assuming, and then other areas on your ship that you're taking in account as well. The rule book doesn't actually seem nearly as big as I was expecting. There's a two player co-op that I didn't notice. And then the instructions are only like five pages. So this might be a game where, again, this is maybe more of my type in that sense, because you've got a lot going on on the table and not, designated by the thickness of this rule book there, which is kind of cool, actually. Okay. Ooh, chips. No wonder this is so heavy. I was wondering why this box was so heavy and I wasn't really paying attention as I was opening up here because I'm too busy trying to pander to you guys to get a viral campaign for me going on the Star Wars Unlimited side of things. But, ooh, can I open this very easily with the plastic? Yes, I can. That's one of the few things that I've really loved over the years. Like, I have an original copy of Splendor. And Splendor is, you know, one of those games that's very divisive and, you know, whatever, right? I've always loved it. My kids have loved it. It's a great intro game for colors, matching, and learning to count. There's a little plastic piece stuck to my finger, static electricity style. So I'm trying to get it off here in front of the camera, which is slightly embarrassing because I don't want to like have to find all these little plastic pieces later. It won't come off. It's just stuck to me, stuck to me, stuck to me. You can kind of see it right there on my middle finger. I'm not going <laughs> to, you want to see it stuck to my middle finger? Just kidding. Uh, I won't do that on camera, right? That won't get FFG to approve of me, but these are nice. These are very heavyweight. These are very nice, but that's what I was going to say about Splendor is I have the original like heavy chips with Splendor. And so I really like those. I really like those a lot. We have some little miniatures here. Again, just kind of little different pieces for all of the different colors and everything you're gonna just kind of see and go along with there. Uh, nothing like super abstract, but like, oh wow. And I wonder though, like this is a big insert for six things of chips. So is there anything under this? I don't think so. I think it's just the chips as a whole, but let's pull out one of these card decks, if nothing else, if I can, I have pulled out the insert now and it's like it's halfway stuck. So let's pull it out and check though, just in case. Okay, I mean, this is a big insert and a big box. And I feel like if you got the chips into baggies, you could trash this insert almost because these cards, again, like individual baggies uh, would be completely fine. And then this thing just by itself outside of this insert, right? Like, let's just, let's just do this a second, right? Okay, boom. You know, I won't put the ones I just, okay, I did just grab the ones I, wait, wait, what? I only did one of these. These gray ones came not include okay anyway um so like i mean again you have like that right and then if i put this stack here and i put that stack here and we pretend though those are in baggies then you have these cards here and these cards here and then you have just the two sets of boards which now um without this insert i mean this insert's fine but it's not really necessary like it's you know almost you could be almost two-thirds of the box size essentially so it's nice but it's not really terribly needed at all it's one of those and personally speaking nowadays you know like again i have nothing wrong with a nice insert um these cards are kind of cool as a whole i'll open one of these card sets just so we can skim through that in addition but at the same time right like if you could see around the camera right now it's why i need a gofundme this room is horrible mess and that's why 
I need like more space, but I've also been selling games too. One to pay for my Star Wars crack, but just yeah, kidding. I don't know. I mean, is that Are people gonna get offended by me saying that? I don't know. It's 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 addictive. Um, no lie. But here you go. Here's some of the cards, color coded based on age, not age of the cards, but the age of the era that you're in there. So okay. I mean, just makes it easy to differentiate the symbology that we saw with some of the others. This one, this one does intrigue me very much so now. It's been sitting on my shelf for a little bit too long. So wait, build the Great Wall. I thought that was like build the black hole, but no, it's build the Great Wall. And I was like, wait, that's the wrong age for black holes. Establish a galactic republic. Establish a galactic empire. Uh-huh, uh-huh, alternative goal. Anyway, so that's what you've got going on here with Utopia. But this is also one, like, Age of Rome is, is kind of uh, more widespread. This was a very small print run of Utopia. And so I'm really intrigued to see what this one uh, does and how I feel about it. Ooh, those chips don't all fit um, in the same spaces. So I tried to just fit one into the gray ones insert, and they did not work. Now, I'm going to keep the insert right now, but after I play this through, I could see myself tossing this insert. Again, not because it's a bad insert, but it takes up a lot of space in the box, and... I wish I was crafty enough to be one of those people who like, you know, you've, speaking of splendor, if you've ever seen the people that do that, like they um, like destroy the box essentially and they make it like two thirds the size, they cut it down. And so um, I wish I was kind of crafty like that. I'm lucky to get this channel up and running though half the time. That's my gist as a whole. But that's also because I went with Apple because my wife and her family has always done Apple. So I got suckered into that. And so I have this weird... Uh, unexplainable allegiance to them and i feel like i should have gone with pc with you know a laptop and i have this old slow mac and i feel like if i would go pc to get the better processing maybe i could do higher resolution recording because i tried higher resolution recording on the main camera that's facing you guys as opposed to the overhead one which doesn't link into the the computer the camera links directly onto the computer to store things and I don't transfer. And it's probably partially because of that. And if I was really smart, I would probably just try and record in super high def on the camera and then transfer it that way. Maybe I should try doing that one of these times because that might do it because just the direct connection between the two, I think is the problem. And the, the camera lags, then the video lags between the video and the audio. So I might just have to try and do that one of these times as well. So uh, that's Utopia, there you go. So those are your games for this video and my thoughts on them and my rambles to go along with it as a small mediocre channel. And I love talking about board games though. Whoops, that does clearly not go there. And my word order and usage is getting out of order because I'm fully thematically incorporated a Yoda style of things, right? Ha ha, tie in. Anyway, uh, that's all I got. We'll throw in Utopia here. Did I... Can I get this one back on there, actually? Probably not. I'll save that for afterwards. You don't want to watch me struggle there because it will be a struggle. It's always a struggle. No, oh, that's there you go. That's all I got. Thoughts, comments, questions, concerns. I'm going to go viral with my Star Wars Unlimited campaign. I'm going to talk about that elsewhere. So help me help you. <laughs> Have a great freaking day. Thanks for watching. If you made it somehow this far and you liked anything I said and you aren't subscribed, that'd be super. I just hit 10K. Took me three years plus. So... Can we get the next 10K a little quicker? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or I have a Patreon. That'll help me as well with the Star Wars Unlimited. Because <laughs> I don't do paid content. You know, I'm going to start asking, you know, publishers or whoever for sponsors, right? Maybe I just go sponsors rather than paid content because it's been weighing on me a lot lately. I'd like to make a little bit more money off of this, right? Is that evil? Is that bad? I'd like to make a little bit more money. I would. For all the time and the effort, I'd like to. But, you know, I'd feel better about it too if I wasn't, you know, doing just like paid content in that sense. So I'm going to start asking around. Probably get some big old fat. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. <laughs> You're never going to get a yes if you don't ask. Going to get lots of no's though at the same time. Peace out. See you around. Oh, crap. Blew a bunch of plastic down to the side when I closed that box lid. A little tiny piece of plastic every time.